Sometimes half just doesn't cut it. Some religious beliefs are like that. You've heard the phrases, maybe even said them. They sound true, like everything happens for a reason, or God won't give you more than you can handle. Love the sinner, hate the sin, or God helps those who help themselves. But when we look at them carefully, we see they are only half true. Join us as we discover the whole truth behind half-truths. Okay. Well, today we are starting a new series uh, about some things called half-truths, and you just heard uh, a number of them mentioned, and we're going to dive into them a little bit more deeply in the weeks to come. Uh, it, at First Christian, we tend to do worship uh, based in series, which means we talk about the same topic over several weeks at a time. Often in the first Sunday, we can dive right into the meat of the conversation. Uh, but today, and for this series, uh, we're going to use today as just an, inter- an introduction, Uh, Because each of the things we're going to talk about are so important that I didn't want to take away from the topic um, by uh, doing the introduction and starting the journey at the same time. So I'm just going to kind of introduce things today, uh, get us all on the same page, so that in the weeks to come we can really dive in to what I think is very important um, in terms of our faith and how we understand our faith and how we seek truth um, in a world where it feels like truth is so much is sometimes so hard to find. Uh, We're going to begin the journey um, by playing a little game. Uh, today, and the game is called Star Wars or Scripture. Um, now, now uh, in, in your pews, throughout the pews, uh, there's a card. Everybody needs a card. And, and at First Christian Church, when we say all, we mean all. Uh, so everybody, everybody needs a card. Um, if, if you don't have one, pass it down. There are plenty. I put more cards in each pew than people can sit in that pew. Um, and so there are plenty of cards. Now, let me say a word. I know sometimes when we do things like this, people are like, oh, I don't know. It's, I'm going to feel like I don't know anything, and it's, I don't want to be embarrassed. Or whatever. We don't do anything on Sunday that we don't do first with the staff during the week. And so this week, um, I gave the staff this quiz. Um, some of us did better than others. Um, one of us was really, really bad. Um, and I, look, I don't like to expose anyone when they do things really, really badly. So we're not going to name any names, uh, but her name does rhyme with Julie Richardson. Uh, and uh, who's a staff person here, and, and uh, Julie was just, I mean, it was epic. Like, it was just epic by the end of it. Um, uh, Tommy didn't take the quiz because he said he wanted to take it this morning real time, um, which I thought was odd. Um, and then this mor- just this morning, I remembered Tommy gets the slides early. He has them, and he's had them, and he's the one who loads them on the computer. Tommy's a cheater. Um, that is clearly, so we can't trust anything that Tommy holds up today because he, you know, he's out there trying to mislead so that he can win. I appreciate the competitive attitude. I like that. Um, so here's this way it's going to work. I'm going to show you some quotes. And when I show you these quotes, um, you are going to decide very quickly rather, whether these quotes are from Star Wars or from Scripture. If they are from Star Wars, you're going to hold up your card with the Star Wars facing me. Facing me. If it's from Scripture you're going to hold up the picture of Scripture facing me. There is no shame in the church. All right? Here's the first one. Who's the more foolish, the fool or the fool who follows him? Star Wars or Scripture? Star Wars or Scripture? It looks like Scripture has this one um, in terms of numbers, but it was Obi-Wan Kenobi. (laughs) I know you're all thinking that's got to be Proverbs. <laughs> nope, that's the gospel according to Obi-Wan. All right, here's the second one. Let me look on you with my own eyes. Star Wars or Scripture? I'm fairly split, fairly split. Darth Vader. Yeah, Darth Vader, Darth Vader. Okay, now keep track because there will be a tiebreaker at the end. So keep track. We, we want to know who wins, right? Okay. Um, oh, don't make me go back and watch my father die. Star Wars or Scripture? It kind of looks like Star Wars, have it? Uh, Genesis 44. <laughs> this will be a day long remembered. Star Wars or Scripture? Darth Vader, Star Wars. 
I know, right? It's at this point in the game where some people, I, I'm watching it happen. Some of you are like, I don't know. <laughs> All right. We must suffer a lot. Star Wars or Scripture? We must suffer a lot. Star Wars or Scripture? Oh, it looks like Scripture. It looks like most of you think it's Scripture. Acts 14, 22. Acts 14, 22. They fail to see why they were defeated. They fail to see why they were defeated. Deuteronomy. I know it sounds like Darth Vader. Uh, it really does. Or Emperor Palpatine or someone like that. Okay, all right. Um, your eyes can deceive you, don't trust them. Your eyes can deceive you, don't trust them. Star Wars or Scripture? Man, it looks like, it looks like, it looks like Star Wars it has more votes this time. Uh, it was Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, you all know when this happened. It happened on the Millennium Falcon as they were leaving, um, uh, you know, as, the, as, the, as they were traveling, and, and, and he's teaching them the first time how to use the, the lightsaber, and he puts the shield over his eyes and says, you all knew that though, right? Okay, okay, all right. All right. I am rescuing my people from your power. Star Wars or Scripture? Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a Jedi, in case you didn't know. Okay. I, he was a good Jedi. Okay. I'm looking for a great warrior. I know, now people are just flipping him around, right? Uh, that's Luke Skywalker, um, Star Wars. Okay. Uh, but even so, there is some good in you. Oh, I know what some of you are thinking right now. I do. I know what some of you are thinking right now. Um, you're wrong. Second Chronicles. All right. All right. So you, know, so you know now you've got your score tallied up. This is really important for family members and friends who are competing against each other, and it may be tied um, because we don't want any ties. So this is the tiebreaker. This is final jeopardy. Everything is on the line. Your Majesty, why are you here? Star Wars or Scripture? Sure. Second Samuel. How'd you do? How'd you do? Uh, I have some really good news for you. I have some really good news for you. You did better than Julie. You got them all just now? Okay. All right. Well, third time before time, I would hope so. Yeah, I would, I would hope so. There's no shame. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. You're right. Thank you. I stand corrected. There's no, this isn't a public shaming. Um, okay. Uh, so it really is fun. That's kind of a fun game. It is a hard game. I mean, one of the reasons it makes it so hard is because every one of those quotes does sound like it could be in both Star Wars and in Scripture. Here's the reason that we did this. One, because it's fun. Two, because I love Star Wars. More importantly, I do love Scripture too. I don't want to leave that out. More, more importantly, um, it's just kind of a fun way to um, just remind ourselves that when it comes to thinking about our knowledge of Scripture, a little bit of humility goes a long way. It's just really important for us to try to keep a sense of humility when we talk about how much we do or do not know when it comes to Scripture. One of the things that I've experienced with Christians is sometimes Christians have a false sense of confidence when it comes to how much they know about faith and about Scripture in particular. And I want to be clear about what I'm saying here. I'm, when, when I talk about how much we know about Scripture and that some people think they know more than they actually do, I'm not talking about breadth of knowledge. Because some people, I'm not just talking about breadth of knowledge, because some people will say, I definitely don't know all there is to know about Scripture. There's way too much for me to know that. And they think since they don't know everything about Scripture, they're not guilty of this. What I've discovered is even people who know very little when it comes to the breadth of Scripture, what they think they know, even if it's small, they can cling to fiercely. And they can sometimes be overconfident about what little they do know. Um, and so I'm, what I'm talking about is not just quantity. I'm talking about um, quality here. How much do we really know? How confident are we? Are we really sure that this is what Scripture says? Or might Scripture say um, something different? Uh, now, I also want to just, I, I, I am not saying that you don't know your Scripture. Some of you probably know more about Scripture than I do. Um, this is, and so I can only talk about my own journey. This is my journey. Um, I've studied scripture a lot. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in religious studies. Very marketable. 
Um, <laughs> very marketable, right? Uh, and I have a master's of divinity degree. I studied uh, scripture and religion formally um, for seven years. Uh, then I've been in ministry for over 20 years. Uh, I've been a Christian for even longer than that. And so I've studied Scripture devotionally, but I've also studied it professionally and for my vocation um, for over 20 years. I've spent a lot of time studying Scripture. What I've learned over the course of that time is that the more I study Scripture, the more I realize I don't know. The deeper you get in, the more you realize you have yet to learn. Um, and, and that's just how this works. Um, and it creates, it doesn't mean that there isn't truth to be found. And it doesn't mean that there aren't some things that I really, um, uh, at least right now, are convinced are more true than some other things. It just means the more you dig into it, um, the more you realize that you may not know everything. Um, and, and one of the things that leads to that, uh, at least for me, is this experience. And maybe you've had it. There are some passages of Scripture that are very important to me, and I study them over and over and over again. They're my go-to passages. But what, what I've discovered is no matter how familiar I am with a book or a passage of Scripture, when I go back to it after a time of being away and study it openly um, and study it again, there's something new that I learn. Because there's always something new to be learned. And, and my experience about that is two things. One, I sometimes get really excited because I go and I read something and I discover something that I didn't know and that, that excites me, it gives me energy, um, it, it makes me want to dig into Scripture even more because I'm learning something and I think learning is exciting and, and I love that aspect of it. At the same time, it can also be a little bit frightening because sometimes there are some passages in Scripture um, that I hold really close. They're a deep, deep, they're a deep belief for me and they shape how I see the world. Um, and sometimes when I'm studying Scripture, and, it, and it's one of those things that I've held as a real deep belief, and I learn something new about it, sometimes it presses against that deep belief. And it makes me question if I was right, even if I was half right. And that can be scary. Because sometimes there are things that we really, really not only believe, but there are things that we want to believe. And when we press up against those things that we want to believe and we discover they may not be true, it can frighten us and it can make us uneasy. One of the things that I wonder, we talk a lot about why it is we don't read the Bible. And I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of really valid reasons. It's overwhelming. It's confusing. I can't follow it. It's, you know, there's all kinds of things. I think one of the unstated reasons that we might not study scripture as willingly um, as we should is because there might be a little bit of fear that what if I open those pages and I read something that directly challenges something that I deeply want to be true, that I deeply hope will be true. Be because when that happens, um, yeah, it's hard. This is what I know about Scripture. If you are a serious student of Scripture and you read it with any intention for any length of time, you're going to read something that's going to challenge you. You're going to read something that's going to force you to question something that you've always believed and always thought true. Um, and when you find those moments, it can be hard. It can make you angry, it can make you vulnerable, it can make you question, it can make you doubt, all of those kinds of things. Um, and, and that's unnerving. And so sometimes we want to run away from that experience. What, what, what I want you to do um, is I want you to get in touch with your inner Jedi and I want you to run toward the danger. I want you to run toward the fear. I want you to run toward the challenge. Because this is what I also know to be true. No matter how powerful and how comforting any belief we may have could be, if that belief isn't actually true, the deeper belief, the fuller truth that's underneath it is better. It's better, I promise you, because the ways of God are always better than our ways. And even those times when we think we wished it was one way, when we understand the depth and the reality of what it really is, um, it's so much better. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about over the course of the next few weeks. Look, we live in a really weird time. Um, we live in a time where truth feels very subjective. We live in a time when people are challenging the truth of other people, when people are proclaiming that their truth is greater, um, when people are saying things that are not true, but they're saying it as if it was. This is a time when truth is getting really, really weird. As Christians... 
We've, we've got to be the voice in the middle of that that says we gotta seek truth and we gotta find it and we've gotta speak to that truth. And sometimes when we do that, it means admitting that we may be wrong. And, and, and so that's really important. And so while we're gonna be talking about some scriptural things, this is a lot, lot bigger than all of that. Super important. So what are we gonna be talking about? Um, the, these are the list of the topics that, that we're gonna look at. Everything happens for a reason. God helps those who help themselves. God won't give you more than you can handle. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. And love the sinner, hate the sin. Okay, by show of hands, how many of you have heard one of these statements, at least one of these statements? Yeah, we've all probably heard at least one of these statements. Now, don't raise your hand this time. You don't have to do that. Um, don't want to shame anybody. Um, how many of you, just, just answer this privately, how many of you have said something like this or believed it to be true? Okay, here's the thing. At best, these are half-truths. I know they sound like they come from Scripture. I know you've probably heard them in church. I know you've heard spiritual leaders talk about them. I know you, you, you've heard them as a representation of our faith. At best, they are half-truths. They are not based in any concrete Scripture. Um, and, and some of them are just flat false. Okay, that's the baseline of, of where we're starting. And even as I say that, I imagine that there are some folks who are hearing me say that that are wanting to press back and are wanting to disagree, and, and, and that's okay. Um, look, here, here's what I want to say about this. Um, uh, we, we really um, need to be willing to, to just talk about what this stuff looks like, what the truth is, and, and, and what it isn't. Um, because even if we say something well-intentioned that isn't true, it can cause someone else pain. Um, the first one that we're going to talk about next week is, is very true about this. When, when someone's hurting, or when we're hurting, and we say everything happens for a reason, we're desperately looking for comfort and meaning and purpose in an uncertain and chaotic world. That is a moment where we're trying to find some solid ground on which to stand. But sometimes things happen, and they're so terrible, and they're so awful, that when the person who is dealing with it hears that, their thought is, if that comes from the God I worship, that you worship, I don't want to worship that God because there can be no purpose to this. It's dangerous and it hurts people. Instead of pulling them into faith, it pushes them away from faith. Um, and, 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 and I know that as we journey through this, this may be happening right now. Um, this, this may be bruising you a little bit. Um, we're not here to call you out. We're not here to prove you wrong um, we're, we're not trying to correct you in some kind of punitive way. Th that is not what this is about. We want to have this conversation in a way that is filled with grace, that is filled with hope, that is filled with love, that doesn't call anyone out in any kind of negative way. That is not what this is about. Um, what this is about is it is about getting to that truth that's far more meaningful, far more real, and far more comforting, even if it's more complicated. Okay, um, And so as we go through this, if you feel yourself pressing back, shutting down and saying, I need to hold on to this belief, I, I really want to encourage you, don't run away from the fight. Don't, don't be afraid. Um, if you need more conversation, we'll be happy to have that. Um, more than happy uh, to have that with you. Um, the other thing that I want to say is, and, and you may be thinking this right now if you're one of these folks, because um, there, there's more than one who's sitting in the pews today, right now. Some of you, um, in moments of your faith journey, have said these things to me. Uh, and maybe you've said it to another staff person or an elder or a spiritual leader, and, and we didn't correct you. And you may be wondering, what, if I said it to you, why didn't you say anything? And, 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 and this, is, it, this may not be sufficient for you, but I want to tell you why, why I don't say something in that moment. Not every moment is a teachable moment. And sometimes... We just need to sit and comfort each other. Sometimes it's not the moment to say, well, actually, right? Sometimes it's just the moment to just sit and weep and pray and walk alongside each other. Um, what I want to do on Sunday morning outside of that kind of immediate vulnerability is to talk about these things objectively as we can. And I realize even as we do that, um, there might be some hurt and there might be some difficulty, but we're going to try so, so very hard um, to do this in a way that feels um, kind of stepped back 
um, so that we don't do that. The other thing, the last thing that that I'll say about these things is um, if you go and dig deep enough in Scripture, you can probably find at least one passage that would at least in some way support every one of these things. But this is what we know about Scripture, and we talk about this all the time. When we are trying to seek the truth of what God is saying to us in God's Word, we look at the totality of Scripture. A lot of times what Christians do is they do something that we call proof texting. And they go to the Bible and they find one piece of text, one piece of Scripture, and they use that Scripture to prove their argument. And they will throw those texts at you. But this, but this, but what about this, and what about this? You can, you can almost argue anything from Scripture. I know some folks don't like to hear that, but you really almost can. Not everything, but a lot. So what we do when we're studying Scripture is we look at the totality of it. If there are 15 Scriptures or lessons that speak against the one, it doesn't mean that there isn't some truth to be found in the one, but we've got to look at the full witness before we rest our hats on that one. Um, And sometimes that can be challenging, but we've got to look at the whole picture and and we're going to do our dead level best to make sure that we're doing that. So yes, you can go find something in scripture that may support um, one of these things, but we're talking about the broad scope of understanding. There's several ways that you can engage in this um, series to get the most out of it. Uh, The first is you can buy this book. Um, we, we don't profit from this. I don't, I don't get any kickback for this. Um, the, the series is going to be based on Adam Hamilton's half-truths. We've used Adam's stuff quite a bit in this church because he's excellent. He's the pastor of the United Methodist uh, Church of the Resurrection in, in Kansas City, near Kansas City. Um, and he is, talk about a just smart guy, really great with faith and reason, asks questions in a really, really good way. One of our small groups used this book as a study, and they had a really great experience with it, which is one of the reasons we're doing it, is because the feedback I got from the leader of that small group. This is really, really good stuff. Um, we're not following their order. We're going to jump around a little bit um, just, just to suit our own purposes a little bit better. Our specific order is the one we just looked at, and it's repeated on some stuff on Facebook and in the church newsletter, so you can see um, what's coming up. Uh, so if you'd like to buy that book, you can get it at your favorite bookseller. We do have a link in today's sermon, which that link is already posted if you want to get it online. Um, the, uh, the other thing that we um, want to encourage you to do is if you miss a week, just jump online and watch the video because, again, this is a series that's kind of going to, all the sermons will stand alone, but, but, but we want you to get a sense of everything that's going on. And finally, starting next Sunday night, uh, we're going to have a conversation about it. Uh, we want to do some intentional work this year about building community in our church and increasing those opportunities. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to do some, some different kinds of, we're going to explore some different kinds of ways of doing that. Next Sunday night, uh, we're going to start a, a conversation, just a study on this. Uh, it's going to run from 6.30 to about, to about 7.45. Uh, Julie Richardson is our primary um, facilitator in that. She's piecing it together. If you miss worship, that's okay. If you don't read the book, that's okay. You can come in having no knowledge of whatever we're going to talk about that night, and it's going to be okay. Um, it's going to be a really good series. It's going to allow us to dig into it even deeper. We're doing that for four weeks, so it won't be the last session. um, We won't be meeting that night, Uh, but we're going to meet starting next week, 6.30 to 7.45 for four weeks. It's a chance for you to go. um, It's a chance for you to go even deeper. Uh, So it should be a really good series, and it should uh, really help us kind of tackle uh, a lot of these um, issues. Again, bottom line, the reason that we're doing this is because I believe with my whole heart that God's truth is better than any half-truth we may be carrying. And sometimes it's hard to let go of half-truths that we hold dear. But when we let go and open up our hands, there's going to be a greater truth that's going to drop in there. Um, And and we're all going to do that together, and I think you're going to find it to be a really, really valuable journey. So, between now and next Sunday, I want to invite you to do a couple things. First, please brush up on your Star Wars because you people have some work to do. Um, Second, uh, uh, just kind of open a spirit of prayer. How is it that you might be able to engage and enter into this dialogue so that you can make the absolute most um, of this journey so that any of those half-truths you may be experiencing won't just spill out like half a cup of coffee and mess up everything for you and and maybe even others. But instead, um, the full picture will give you hope and life. Amen.